I'm not afraid to admit that sometimes I have very strong opinions on these videos. Other times, I just don't know, and it's okay to say that too. I've reached no solid conclusion on the following case. I've gone back and forth and back again. I'm really interested to hear what you think below in the comments. So, here we go. Any loving mother, and I include pet parents in that, will know that if you take your eyes off a child for even one second, tragedy has the potential of striking. They could slip, fall, break something, or be too inquisitive for their own good. It comes with the territory, and thankfully, in most cases, these worries are without cause. However, in Rebecca Zaha's case, the worries were realized one fateful day at the Spreckel Mansion in Colorado. On this day, Rebecca would lose a child she considered to be like her own. A child she had been co-parenting with her boyfriend for over three years, half his life, in addition to his mother Dina in the most tragic of circumstances. This led to a chain of events and a series of twists and turns that almost defy belief. This horrible event would take place on the 13th of July 2011. Rebecca, her sister Zena, the family dog Ocean and the young boy entrusted to her care Max were spending the summer vacation at the mansion residence. This was owned by her boyfriend Jonah. As far as the records show, they were the only people in the house at the time. Rebecca stated that she had decided to go to the bathroom thinking that the boy would be fine for a few moments. However, little did she know that disaster was about to strike. While Rebecca was in the bathroom, Max was playing at the top of the stairs on his Razor scooter. He then supposedly took a tumble face first off the second story banister, leading to the young child suffering several critical injuries. Max had major damage to his spinal cord and suffered blunt force head trauma with enough force to shatter several facial bones. This caused complications to his natural heart rate and his ability to intake oxygen. When Rebecca emerged from the bathroom, Max lay at the foot of the stairs and her sister Zena was on the phone with him, having rung 911. Rebecca later claimed that the boy had said Ocean, the name of the dog, while he lay on the floor. However, this was inconsistent with his injuries, which would have immediately rendered him unconscious. The young boy was rushed to hospital and the doctors did everything they could. However, Max would die a few days later on the 16th of July 2013 due to brain damage caused by oxygen deprivation. The police were involved in this situation but quickly ruled the event to have been a freak accident. However, on the 26th of July, an autopsy revealed that the cardiac arrest and respiratory issues did not correlate with the fall and injuries that Max suffered due to the fall. For one, the boy had a marking from the banisters high up his back, but the centre of gravity meant that the stair would have been too high for him to have toppled from that impact, according to biomechanics experts. There was also a suggestion by experts that Max may have been suffocated prior to the fall. While the circumstances of the autopsy were strange, they were pushed to the wayside by events that occurred days before, while little Max still lay in the hospital. On the 12th of July, just a day after the tragic events, the family gathered for a somber meal after putting Zena, Rebecca's sister, on a plane back to Missouri. They ate and then went their separate ways, with Jonah returning to the hospital to accompany Max's mother, Dina. They had been given residence closer to the hospital at a nearby Ronald McDonald house. Rebecca and Jonah's brother, Max's uncle, Adam, returned to the mansion. According to police reports, there was loud music from the residence that night. At 6.45am the following morning, Adam called the police to say that he had found Rebecca hanging from the balcony, an external one by the way, not the same one that Max had been found under, indicating that she had died by her own hand. However, when Rebecca was found, she was gagged with her hands and feet bound, had tape residue all over her body and she was naked. Now, let me point out that aside from the obvious extreme difficulty that goes along with taping yourself up and then jumping from a balcony, the idea of anyone, but in particular a female allowing for her own self to be discovered nude, is extremely, extremely, extremely rare. Did I put the emphasis enough on the extremely part? There was also writing on the wall which read, She saved him, can you save her? weird third person thing going on there. 
Police arrived at the scene and were quick to suspect foul play. However, upon searching the scene and doing various toxicology and forensic testing, the authorities were unable to find any other DNA at the scene other than that of Rebecca Zahoud. So the police chalked this one up to her having unalived herself despite the strange circumstances. However, the evidence of this case was quickly reconsidered as Rebecca's autopsy results showed some interesting contradictions. Rebecca, on the night of her death, had suffered significant head trauma, thought to have been four severe blows to the head. The doctor performing the autopsy speculated that there was a slim possibility that she could have hit her head on the banister on the way down from where she dropped. However, they also stated that the chances of hitting her head four times was extremely unlikely. Upon obtaining these new findings, the Zaha family requested a second autopsy. This pathologist believed that not only were the strangulation injuries incurred due to manual strangulation, he also found that Rebecca had been S-A'd on the night of her death. By the way, if you're wondering why I use references like S-A and unaliving oneself here, it's because even though video content like this is always limited in distribution by YouTube, which in some cases is fair enough, there are certain words that can get your video blocked entirely. So if you're not sure what S-A means, a quick Google should help. I'll say it's a horrible invasive thing to happen to anyone. Despite this, the police force were desperately trying to stick by their initial decision. They showed the family demonstrations of how attempts in the past have seen individuals bound by both their hands and feet. Additionally, they also tried to cement their ruling by using the note in the wall. However, the family remained skeptical and stated that this was not her handwriting or a phrase that Rebecca would have written. The Zaha family would not take the decision lying down and decided to hire an attorney to fight the decision. This would lead to a series of events, including cease and desist letters filed by Jonah and a wrongful death lawsuit being carried out by the Zaha family, leading to a trial in 2018. This trial was to challenge the ruling of the Colorado Police Department and found Adam Shacknight to be responsible for the death of Rebecca. The trial was successful for the Zaho family who were awarded $5 million in damages and a further $167,000 in financial support. This vote was not unanimous with the sway being 9 to 3 but as this was a civil trial it didn't need to be a unanimous decision. While justice was eventually dealt seven years after the events of July 2013, the curious autopsy of little Max Shacknow was never explained, so there are more mysteries yet to be uncovered within this story. We may not have heard the last of it, only time will tell. I'm really interested to hear your theories below because I've gone back and forth on this one. Until we speak again, sending you good vibes. Stay safe out there.